Hello, everybody, and welcome to another one of these photo speed conversations. And I'm very happy to be joined by Tim, as usual, from Photo Speed. Hi, Tim. Hello. <laughs> and we have a special guest today. A man who knows everything there is to know, no pressure, about Sony cameras, lenses, and everything in between. Mark uh, Baber from Sony, how are you? Yeah, great. Thanks, guys, for uh, this opportunity. Lovely to be here. No Thank you. No, it's really good. I mean, I think it's sometimes difficult, isn't it, We to get hold of people at certain companies. I don't necessarily mean Sony. Uh, but, you know, as a consumer, it's great to be able to talk to someone who's in the mix with what's going on with the brand, who's conversing with uh, professionals, and obviously you've got great experience as well. So actually maybe, Mark, before we get into any of the details about the Sony gear, and we're going to cover some of the kit, and we're also going to cover some of the reasons why people are using things differently now. I think that's a really interesting topic. The fact we're all doing this uh, remotely and, and how we're working and communicating has changed. But just outline, Mark, for us what, what your role is and, and maybe how you came to be in that role in your background as well. Yeah, no, I... I totally echo what you're saying. This is really one of the only ways we can reach out to our customers, isn't it? And it's a great way of doing it. So, um, you know, I think this is going to be here for a long time. This isn't just going to go away. So, uh, and I think we've all adapted to it, as as we'll find out. But um, yeah, Mark Baber, uh, I'm the technical marketing manager uh, in the photo channel for the UK and Ireland. So basically what that means is I'm, I'm the events guy. I'm the event manager for everything to do with the photo channel. So that's, you know, working with brands like Photospeed, all the retail that are you know all the independent specialist retailers so park cameras london camera exchange wex and um if i've missed anybody out on there you know there's a long list of them and we we engage with them quite heavily in consumer engagement and of course that's changed uh this is physical events obviously trade shows workshops you know i've worked with photo speed uh with uh, sony uh, over the last four years i've been with sony for four years and now obviously that's all transferred to online and I'll come on to that in a, in a bit later. But pre, pre, pre that, I worked in the uh, photo industry for 10 years with Panasonic. And uh, I was I had a variety of roles with them. And that's how I came across Photospeed many, many years ago. Uh, Vince and uh, Toby, Ben, uh, and, the, and their father and so on. And I was a, a trainer, a product manager, a trade marketing manager, event manager, uh, and so on. So there's a lot of uh, professional photographers out there that I've worked with, with both brands. Uh, and that you know have a, a, a very close relationship with photo speed as well which is which you know the synergy is excellent and then i'm not going to bore you in my retail days but where my photography passion came from was when i was at college and i studied um, graphic design and art and design and i kind of fell on my feet with photography so i've used dslr technology uh, you know i've used four thirds micro four thirds uh, mirrorless cameras and now i'm you know very fortunate to use Sony gear, full frame, APS-C. So I class myself as an enthusiast um, because I don't really have the the time to to be called a class myself as an amateur, although I probably am. I'm certainly not a professional, uh, but I just love using the gear. And, um, you know, to be able to talk about the gear with you uh, is a great opportunity. So thanks for this uh, time with you guys. No, no, it's cool. I think... Well, I think what's really interesting, Mark, before we get into maybe some of the latest things that Sony have been doing, is if we just kind of take a step back and look at the marketplace, how that has kind of totally changed in the last five to six years, especially, mm. uh, or maybe even a bit before that. And for me, as a, as a fairly new mirrorless user, uh, and I know there's still lots of people from the research we've done, that there's still at least 50% of people using DSLRs and maybe more. Uh, I'd be interested to know if you've got any stats around that. It may vary on the demographic, but it feels like Sony just crashed head first into that marketplace and threw it all up in the air with the advent of mirrorless and really kind of ground out a place for them. Do you think that's fair to say? Yeah, wow. We could spend a long time on this because it's a real passion of mine. You know, I, I, I'm, you know, say a fortunate to work for Sony. Um, I've I've worked in the industry, the photo industry for a long time. So I've built up good relationships, uh, you know, with all different brands, uh, whether they're competitive brands uh, or, or you know, brands that you work in synergy with. So um, yeah, over time, so my Panasonic days back in two thousand and eight, when mirrorless started to kind of evolve. Uh, with with predominantly Panasonic and Olympus with with uh, four thirds uh, sensors and mounts, um, 
you know, it was very heavily, I'd say probably 80% DSLR uh, owners versus a very small percentage, 20% of purchases, certainly in the UK uh, and, and Europe and Ireland and so on. It was, you know, in favour of DSLR. And that has gradually changed dramatically uh, over, you know, the last, what was 2008, decade, yeah? Uh, well, 2008, 2018, yeah, yeah, so, you know, 10, 10 years plus. Um, to, to, to most recently, where actually, you know, it depends what data you look at, and most manufacturers will obviously use data like GFK and so on. But it's changed. And in some European countries, it's almost the other way around. So I think this year, uh, in the last financial year, uh, which normally is between, uh, you know, some January, December, or maybe, you know, April to March, you're looking at between 50 and 60 percent towards mirrorless in favor of mirrorless. So the mirrorless market is outweighing the DSLR market. And I think that's very exciting because, you know, when we talk about technology, we talk about competitive, you, you look at, you know, the new releases of cameras from all manufacturers in the last, uh, you know, I don't know, six, 12 months. It's been predominantly, correct me if I'm wrong, mirrorless technology. And I think the message is, if you're looking to switch from DSLR to mirrorless uh, and you're looking at Sony, then you are going to get the latest technology. You're going to get uh, you know, a, a bit of a, a legacy and heritage that's only a very short space of time uh, compared to some other manufacturers that have been in the business for a lot longer making cameras. Um, so rest assured, if you're looking to come over and we've got some information we can share with you today that we've got an established system. But yeah, you're right. The, the shift in the way people have now uh, buying their cameras. And of course, remember, we've had a year of not being able to meet anybody uh, to talk to people and put the cameras in their hands and go, you know, and, and, and talk to me. You know, I get I get quite passionate when somebody says, hey, yeah, I'll wait for mirrorless to catch up with my DSLR, which is 10 years old. You think, well, hang on a minute. That technology is a lot faster than what you've got. Let me show you at the moment. We can't do that. We can't physically take the camera and, and launch it through through the lens. So obviously doing webinars and things like this are really important to try and get the message across. But yeah, huge shift in the market. Uh, in favour of, of mirrorless technology. Can we just before we get into the models? Uh, let's just carry on that theme for a second because I think it makes sense to talk about it now. I mean, I'm, I'm someone who uses mirrorless, and, and one of the main motivators for, for me was the fact I'm be, I was being asked commercially to do a lot more video, more and more video. And I think I'm not alone in that. Lots of people like me are having to deliver sort of multimedia. Uh, solutions to people that can be imagery videos and, and a bit of a mix so do you think that just that technical that technological sorry advancements just happened to marry hand in hand with what was being required from uh, creators at the time and maybe one thing pushes the other in a way but it just seemed that certainly a lot of my colleagues who are video shooters really picked up on the sony thing early but now i think the photographers are taking it super seriously as well yeah, I think this, you know, one of the, it's a really good, really, really good question because um, the word content creator or, or you know, has, has appeared literally on everyone's lips in the last year more than ever. They've, there's always been content creation, but that overlap or com combination of stills and video is more uh, popular, more talked about, more evident social media you know, webinars, transferring everything online, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, uh, for myself in the last year, you know, I'm creating internal content for for our retailers uh, with new products. When I'm doing webinars, as I gave you an example earlier, I'm creating uh, the only way I can interact with our customers by showing what I could effectively show in person, but try and get that technology across in the form of video. So I've up to, had to up my game and understand the codex and mm. you know or how how to use manual focus and and which sounds quite easy, but no, it's not. So focus peaking and all that technology. So for me, it's really important that I'm using the right technology and I'm get and I, I make the content look good. But coming back to what you said, I think video has always been there. I mean, the amount of trade shows we've done and you know even with 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 uh, photo speed, people go, no, don't talk to me about video. I don't want to know about video, <laughs> you know, cover that red button um, because they just don't use it. And fine, that's fine. But I was thinking about this in preparation for, for the webinar today. And it's, how can I explain? If you've got a really powerful camera 
that does, you know, like the A1, 30 frames per second, 50 million pixels, blackout free um, viewfinder, you know, a, a sensor that sends like nearly 300 raw shots to the sensor before it hits the card because it's got a memory built in. OK, so from a stills perspective, that's incredible. But to be able to do that, it's got to have a processor in there that can then do things like 8K video. So I think the answer here is you may not want video, but if your next camera is what we call a hybrid camera, which has a combination of the two, then only that's a good thing. Because, yes, don't don't press the red button then. That's fine. But the, the, the technology inside the processor engine is so sophisticated. It's Sony technology of got to say it's you know all in-house technology that's going to in only enhance your photography so you know you look at um, the a7r range resolution 64 million pixels on an a7r mark 4 as a landscape photographer it's going to give you incredible dynamic range 15 plus stops you know even with a naked eye we can't see that kind of level of detail until you're pulling it out or reducing the highlights and and, and so on and improving the, you know, the shadows in post editing. So, but alongside that, it does incredible video. And you know, the two pieces of technology work in harmony. So my message is, it might be time for those photographers that may not necessarily use video to embrace it because it can enhance uh, and add value to what you're already doing. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're using those cameras to earn a living, uh, you know, your competitor or the person next to you that's using the same camera is using video in a in a way that you know maybe you're not that you could embrace and it could actually you know enhance your uh, customer reach um, uh, and quality. And I know my Panasonic days uh, they had a, and still have I think is like this 4K 6K photo mode where you can select scenes from from video uh, on the back of the screen. Very cool. You see a um you know a group of photographs you choose which one you want and you select it saves it as an image well our cameras do that as well uh, although it doesn't have a mode where you can you know it's, it's a graphic interface that shows you how to do it you literally can record 8k video remember video is individual stills uh, made up of you know footage so 8k video on an a1 each frame is 33 million pixels so you know 10 seconds of 30 frames per second, you know, um, sorry, a, a video footage at 8K, you know, you can use eight, you could use video in a way that you may not be able to because your camera's not fast enough, if you know what I mean. Hmm. So, for example, on an A7 III, which shoots 24 frames, sorry, 24 million pixels at 10 frames per second stills, actually, if you flicked it into 4K video, you could shoot 4K video at 30 frames per second and take a still out at 8.3 million pixels. So, actually... If not a lot of people knew that, you could use the video in your camera to shoot higher moving, <laughs> you know, subjects. Uh, mm. The higher the resolution, uh, or you know, eight, eight times greater definition or detail than you get in standard definition. So I mean, again, if you buy an 8K camera like an A1, it'll cost you six and a half thousand pounds. So it's not necessarily something that, you know, we're going to buy off the shelf straight away. <laughs> it's a very professional and it's aimed at a very higher end. Uh, but it's available to to uh, to anybody that purchases it. So yeah, I think it's time to, uh, you know, probably if you haven't used your video or you're looking to get a new camera with quality video, it's gonna it's gonna help and enhance uh, certainly your workflow. Mm. So don't yeah. be afraid of the red button. <laughs> no, yeah. The red button's good, everybody. Red is good. Yeah. Um, Tim, any yeah. any thoughts just before we ask Mark to maybe give us a kind of model overview? Because especially for the people who either are still using DSLRs and or they may have been early mirrorless people and they, and they want to know what's going on now. We'll get Mark to give us a full rundown on that. But just mm. from your point of view, Tim, with regards to tech, any any thoughts on that? No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I suppose I'm quite an old fashioned person when it comes to tech, I would say. Um, but I do use Sony now. Um, got an A7 II, I think, actually. So it's quite old now, but still does what I want it to do. But I've kind of used everything from the, like you said, the, the early Olympus cameras, the um, foot through, four thirds right through our film obviously and then right through to the, the mirrorless now and rangefinders in between as well and I think it's kind of I was always a big fan of the rangefinder cameras um just because I it, kind of the focusing and things like that but on the Sony actually I think they're kind of a hybrid almost between those DL, DL, 
DS, yes, if I can get my words out, DSLRs, and the um, rangefinder cameras with the peak focusing as well. Because, of course, you can use the manual lenses. And I used to stick Leica lenses on my, um, well, I still do actually, on my Sony, and it used the peak focus to focus. And it, it's brilliant. Um, you, know, you have to get used to it and things, but it's just like using um, kind of rangefinder cameras and things like that as well. And you get the best of both worlds. And it's kind of, um, it's great technology. Mm. Um, yeah, I, 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 I quite I, sometimes I don't understand the resistance sometimes with people as well, but that's just um, personal preference, I suppose, isn't it? I don't know. That's a really good. That's a really good way. There, there is a lot of objectives out there, and I think it's mainly because um, when we're when we're seeing people at trade shows, you, you, you can almost, you know, you can, you can pick up the camera and just say, look, look, just have a look at that, you know, and 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 let me show you what that is. Now I'm bringing that up because, you know, you're probably thinking, what the, what is that? yeah what is that what i mean come on what what is it you know you can see it on an image but what what is it well that's the new fx3 okay and i'll cover this in a second very briefly mm. but the fx3 bridges the gap now between our traditional alpha cameras mirrorless cameras and our cinema line and the cinema line goes right up to the venice which is used to make films and I'm not talking about a solo shooter. I'm talking about massive productions, you know, up with the Ari Alexas and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's it's that I couldn't imagine how, how much it costs, but it's massive. But the fact is now, you know, you can bridge that gap between the two. And most stills photographers are going to look at it and go, well, I don't want one of those. But the fact is there could be somebody along there that might go, hang on a minute. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And I think when we've had that opportunity to put it in the hands of the consumer at physical events, we have that opportunity, and I'm going to use the word because it does, does you know, it, it's not a negative word, disrupt their journey. We've almost gone, have a look at this, have a consider, you know, think about it. You've tried it out. You've tried the autofocus. You've tried the eye autofocus. You've tried all, You've even tried the dynamic range in the dark area of the, you know, the exhibition hall. And that person then saying, my goodness, I might, you know, I didn't consider Sony because I, you know, I've just read off what I've seen online and, and depending on what you're looking at, you know, there's, there's a lot of views out there. So I'm missing that, you know, interaction with, with people. And I think, you know, um, it, it, I don't think you can get any better than that. So let's return to, you know, physical events as, as quickly as we can, but obviously following, you know, guidance mm. from uh, from yeah. the people around us. So, uh, but, uh, you know, I think that's very powerful being able to do that. But, you know, we've, we haven't been able to do that uh, in the last year. No, and it, just getting things in your physical hand is really important, I find. It's... You know, you, you've got to know the weight, how, where all the buttons are. And I would say, actually, just a final thought on this before we get into the range. You know, I, I switched brands when I went DSLR to mirrorless, and with and I took it off to New Zealand two days after, and I had a three-week work thing there. So it had to work, and, and within a day, I felt fine on it. But you, you <laughs> physically have to pick these things up. And fundamentally, it's the camera. It's there to help you get what you want out of it but um whenever you get a chance to go along to trade shows photography shows whatever i would say just as a as, as a thing here don't think everyone's trying to sell you something people like mark are just batty about cameras and they'll happily talk to you about helping <laughs> oh. you so you know that is the thing just to get on um but mark do you want to get into just the range to give us an update because it's a little yes. overwhelming sometimes there's a lot of models and i think if we can just have a really good kind of clear view of of the main models and the newest things that might be suited to, to certain types of shooters. You're, no, you're absolutely right. And I think um, when you, you know, even if you came to a trade show, you know, in the future, we'll have all this kit out and you look at it and you go, where's the landscape one? Where's the low light one? Uh, <laughs> does that do video? Um, can that lens fit on that? Can I fit my DSLR lenses on and so on? So, um, I'll cover that bit with the lens range, but yeah, if I just bring up, um, and, and when I bring this slide up, don't worry, it's not gonna be a thousand slides PowerPoint. You can see me in the in the, in the the picture here. I don't know if you can make that full screen, Tim. Brilliant. Okay, so, um, so very briefly, this is the current lineup of our full frame cameras. I'm not gonna go into the APS-C cameras or the cinema line or anything, but this just gives you probably our most popular cameras. and. Uh, we've just released actually in the last few months a new camera called the a1 now this a1 will sit at the top of the pyramid of all these cameras it's a flagship camera and you know again not much detail here but 30 frames a second 8k video bird eye autofocus in flight crazy uh but it's a very fast camera and it's the one that does everything it's perfect for low light it's perfect for resolution and speed 
Now, the A92, a lot of people thought that was the flagship camera, and this is where it gets interesting. It was the flagship camera for speed, hit rate, reliability. So the A9 range is speed, reliability, hit rate, fast sensor. But again, anybody can use them, but that's its purpose, speed. If you look at the A7R range, the A7R Mark IV, which is the one I'm using to um, stream here, is resolution. So it's 61 million pixels. The A7R 3 and 2 are 42 million pixels. So this is perfect for landscape. You know, could be used for commercial, could be used for well, it could be used for anything, but predominantly landscape. And it's also got a built-in crop factor that you can go from 61 million to 28 million with 100% autofocus coverage so all of a sudden it goes from being a great landscape camera to a great wildlife camera so you could um, change your focal length say on a 200 to 600 mil full frame lens flick it into crop mode you've now extended it by 1.5 times so it goes to a 300 sorry i've got to work this out now a 300 to 900 mil lens with 28 million pixels and 100 percent autofocus coverage wow that's a that's just incredible, you know. So uh, resolution is uh, A7R. A7S is the low light uh, range. So A7S3 is the flagship of the low light. And this does, and I won't roll off all the video capabilities, but it's the broadcast cam quality camera, low light, um, you know, slow-mo. It's a 12 million pixel sensor, so it's a lot smaller, uh, sorry, larger pixels, obviously letting more light in, different circuitry. And I'm not you know, lying here or, or, or fibbing or any, I would never do that anyway. But, you know, I've been using it last year and I was pushing it to 32,000 ISO with zero noise in it. And I know there's a lot of content creators out there pushing it even further. So, you know, rest assured, low light A7S2 uh, and A7S3. And then the A7 III, which is probably one of the most popular cameras we've got. Again, these are all full frame. This is our all rounder. So a bit of low light, not like the A1, because this price point's a lot, lot cheaper uh, than the A1. But it, you know, it has like the autofocus system from the A9 or very similar, uh, a little bit of low light, good resolution, good signal to noise ratio, 24 million pixels. You know, this is like a 5D Mark III stroke four or, a, you know, I can't remember what the Nikon equivalent is. But, you know, it, somebody who's looking at maybe moving from a 5D Mark III or, my, or 5D Mark IV might be thinking, well, go for that equivalent for Sony and it's an A7 III um, and the A7C is a flat retro modern style kind of rangefinder type exactly the same as the A7 III with a bit of uh, newer technology and that's more of a you know it looks really stylish silver black kind of Fuji-esque you know Fuji makes some really nice looking cameras and you know it's our uh, approach to more of a, a street photography style. And we've just released some new lenses, very smaller, lightweight lenses. Uh, so, it, you know, a very uh, smaller, lightweight, but no compromise on quality. You know, full frame capabilities. In fact, it just pips the A7 III and a few things. And I've thrown in the FX3 that I showed you just now, because now that bridges that gap to the video cameras. The, the you know, this is an ideal sh solo shooter camera. Uh, one, you know, one person on their own, microphones and so on, but it has the quality of the cinema line. And that now, you know, if you're looking to go through that video uh, side of our business, of our market, then this is that, that it leads it through. So you'd naturally go from an A7S series to an FX series. And we've never had that uh, that bridge before. So that gives you an idea in a, in a very short space. Uh, there, I'll just bring myself back to me. <laughs> That's the full frame range. And of course, on top of that, we do the APS-C cameras. So the smaller lightweight cameras, uh, the A6000 series, uh, and then that links to the ZV-1, the little compact vlogging cameras. Uh, so, you know, there's this now this ecosystem that goes all the way through from, you know, smaller, lightweight, compact, right through to uh, the Venice, right at the top, that uh, cinematic mm. camera. Um, and in such a short space of time, I think 2007, I think we introduced the first full frame mirrorless camera uh and, you know so we've got all these bodies and then lenses uh which i'll come on to in a second but you know mm. rest assured if you're thinking of coming over to sony i think the message there is we've got an established system uh with in-house technology that gives you you know things like eye autofocus and you know bird bird eye autofocus i mean i've tried it it works it does <laughs> <laughs> how it, <laughs> it works well we haven't we haven't got the time to go through it and, and but but basically it it, it, it is 
artificial intelligence that's in the camera. You know, you see all those security mm. systems out, you know, and pick, picking up facial recognition and, it, it, you know, these things work on pattern and uh, movement and, uh, you know, it has algorithms built in to recognize contours of faces, birds and, and animals, you know, it. but all that happens as soon as you depress that shutter, it happens. Lightning, you know, you don't even need to think about how many faces is this? You know, it doesn't have all built in faces of your family in, but it can recognize contours and immediately. So you I, I know when I switch my Sony camera on, uh, I've been using the A7S three recently that every time I go to focus on my kids, uh, a nice portrait or anything like that, I know that it's going to focus on the eye as long as I've make sure it's on. <laughs> That's yeah. the other thing. You know, make sure, you know, why isn't it? Oh, I've got animal eye to focus on, you know, so, so, you know, human error is always at hand but uh, but that, hopefully that gives you a good picture of where everything sits in the range Ooh. yeah definitely I, th I, I was just going to ask about the lenses because i think mm. uh, for those that people that haven't changed uh you know we've mentioned there's the the old guard brands if we can call them that I, i'm allowed to call anybody anything because i don't work for any of you um but <laughs> but i think it's interesting that there were some that sort of legacy lenses i know when i changed over from uh, a particular brand to another one the one thing I just was so reluctant to get rid of was the 70 to 200 2.8 uh, lens, which happens to be have an L on it, uh, which is just an absolute killer of a lens. And I think a lot of people I speak to, uh, clients who come on workshops and things like that, uh, some of them are a bit reluctant, okay, about their bodies and getting used to them. But there is also a lens thing. They may have invested heavily in the lens setups that they have. And I know there are adapter options as well. So maybe, it, Mark, if you give us kind of an overview of, of how the lens uh, roadmap and how the lens product offering has really come on from Sony and maybe with a nod to how people who are coming with older lenses might just do a sort of transition yeah. to that and then move on and through. Yeah, guys, this is great because this is almost like the journey we take customers through when we meet them for the first time or or, or, or second or third time at events. So it's, you know, it's that, you know, if I'm coming into this system, how many lenses have you got? You know, I think you do a few lenses. Well, we do, there's 64 native lenses in the sony range right that's pretty a heavy bag yeah right yeah it's a big bag yeah um but again there's variety of lenses so uh you, you know we've got some really small lightweight like a nifty 50 1.8 50 mil full frame lens you know i don't know where people would buy it from uh, there's obviously a lot of uk and ireland retailers out there i'm not going to favor uh, one in particular but the uk retailers out there you know 250 to 300 quid you know it's really small lightweight uh, and i know a lot of professionals use it in their studios because it just does exactly what they're looking for and then they, you can go right up to the 600 mil the 400 mil uh you know telephoto lenses which are a lot more expensive than the entry level kit but again the aps-c lenses as well so there are four last week we announced the 14 millimeter g master 1.8 as you can imagine very wide very fast perfect for landscape astrophotography incredible there's a lot of content out there so that's now the 44 full frame lenses and 20 APS-C lenses so let's have a let's bring up a nice little graphic again here here we go and Mark, and, sorry just just before yeah. you jump into that I'm going to point out that I, I actually put a query out to followers if there are any questions for Sony people so I'm gonna grab Mark after this little bit I'm going to put just a couple of questions to him that you guys have sent in. So sorry, I just wanted to say that now. No, uh, brilliant. We'll come to that common <laughs> use of things, but let's get into the lenses. Cool. Well, look, if you can see on this chart here, you know, back in 2013, we brought a, a series of lenses out right up to present day. You know, I think in the last year we brought out 10 new lenses and, and I can only, you know, hope that we continue to, to develop and, and, and put more to the range. But the fact is, you know, all those lenses that we created back in 2013 will work on the latest cameras that we've just released. So there's no Mark IIs and so on. They're all the same native lenses. And I'll, I'll use this word a lot before I come on to how can you bring your glass over. Is there's nothing better in any system than having a native system to make the handshake between the lens and the body it's all being tested on this equipment so to get the full sony technology you you know s stick within the sony range um but as we know there are other man manufacturers out there that also make sony lenses so it's not just obviously the 64 native lenses that we'd like obviously people to invest in uh, for those purposes you know there's an i don't know how many there are outside there that are made by other manufacturers so the message there is there's a system that has probably the most 
you know, quote me if I'm wrong, but, um, you know, sorry, don't quote me if I'm wrong, but, uh, you know, probably that, you know, compared to, uh, say, other mirrorless systems out there. But the fact with this is you don't need an adapter. So what I'm showing you on here is just the full frame lenses. So the mm. APS-C body is the same mount. I'll bring up a little graphic here, actually. If I just get rid of this, just bear with me a second as I'm talking. Hopefully this will come up. There we go. It's one mount for the, look at that. It's a fancy, isn't it? One mount for the whole system. <laughs> so all these cameras you see here, the cinema line, the APS-C cameras, the full frame lenses, it all fits together. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, cool. Um, sorry, I thought I'd taken my microphone off. So yeah, the whole system's the same. So no adapters. You don't need to use any adapters for this to, to work. So all 64 native lenses will fit across the whole of the range. And I think that's a really strong message to get across because if there are people thinking, well, I've got an older NEX um, so, uh, Sony camera uh, that I've had for a while. Yes, those lenses will fit. Uh, and if you're you're using the older system, like the AMAT system, which we inherited from Minolta many, many years ago, then there are adapters actually within the Sony system to bring your AMAT glass over as well. Um, which then leads me on to third party adapters. Now, third party adapters are great because they bring another system over but there is a difference between and i'm not going to pick on any you know manufacturer or different lenses but when we've done testing you can see the difference between uh, the way it focuses the algorithms obviously on the the autofocus of our system is made for our lenses so there will be some differences uh, and there may be some technology that may work that may not work on third party lenses and a good example of doing that explaining that is the a1 that shoots 30 frames per second will shoot 30 frames per second on a number of sony lenses but the moment you put an adapter on it will drop it down to 20. so you won't be able to get the full capability of that camera based on the fact that it's a native system and the native focusing will work or frames per second will work on native lenses so you know it but those people, that are, I, I totally understand. You've got a lot of lenses, uh, quality glass that you want to bring over. Uh, there are a number of third-party adapters out there. My advice to you is shop around, do a good research, talk to uh, ambassadors and advocates that may be using it, um, and you know make your decision on that. But the fact is, you can uh, bring your glass over. And if I just you know just show you this slide here, you know, just this one very quickly just to mix the background up a bit, talk to your retailer. Because if you're sat on a lot of glass, the DSLR secondhand market is huge. So, you know, your value of your glass may not be what you're looking for, but talk to your retailers, because there's a number of retailers out there that have, you know, dedicated secondhand, you know, managers that manage their, their businesses. And when you talk to them, you know, we, we send a lot of leads to uh, different retailers based on who they want to shop with to be able to support that, individual that may have a lot of glass that they want to trade in and they can trade that money off a sony camera or lens whatever or, or lenses and cameras and then watch out for our offers as well and this isn't a hard sell and I, i'd like what you said earlier sam around you know we're not here to hard sell anybody that's not in our nature our you know main task is to educate and show and you know show what our systems can do it's down to the individual to make that decision but we're there to help uh, the retail the retailers are there to help make that transition so watch some of the offers because like i think a couple of weeks ago uh, i think it's finished now we were throwing in additional 400 pound trading bonus so if you were getting a thousand pound from the retailer for the lens uh, you were getting an extra 400 pounds from sony so you know watch out for those type of retail uh, uh, retailer offers because we will offer uh, depending mm -hmm. on what time of the year it is and so on that ability to help you make that transition but if you want to stick with your lenses because they're really good, you can move them over and get certain uh, technology uh, that you may not be getting with your existing camera, but you can do that. Mm. Yeah. Cool. That's, Tim, any quick thoughts before I go to the viewer no, questions? I, don't think, I think Mark's covered it, really. I think it's, uh, I, I'm just looking at the things going, I want that one, I want that one, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like this is turning into a really expensive that. talk. I know it is. It's great. I, yeah, I, I just I mean, want that. That little A7C looks fantastic for me. Um, but anyway, that's yeah. a, that's another issue. <laughs> 
yeah don't get me wrong i mean it's a it, it, it you know you can invest a lot of money or people mm -hmm. have already and uh, uh one thing i forgot to mention there there are a variety of lenses we have uh, a standard sony a g standard g master which is our premium lenses and then we do a collaboration with Zeiss as well, uh, where we have a number of very um, uh, a good, they offer you a just slightly different looking camera, uh, high resolution, uh, a nice contrast. Uh, so, you know, it's not just 64 lenses, there are a variety uh, of, of um, uh, in technology within that as well. So it's the um it's the color on the zeiss lenses isn't it it can't yeah, absolutely can't really describe it. you have to see it it's kind of one of those yeah and I, and, and I yeah yeah and i'm using a zeiss sony lens as well specifically mm. for that real you know sharpness and well not on this one but when i'm doing portraits and stuff like that it gives you a certain look um that uh you may want to be getting post but actually you can do it in camera so yeah mm -hmm. cool okay well listen i think it's, it's, on the kit side of things, I would encourage anyone, I'm speaking independently here, that the mirrorless is definitely the way forward. Whether you're a, a, a landscape photographer who doesn't care about video, it doesn't matter. They're, they're still ahead, I feel, getting ahead now. In usability, there's many great things in terms of looking through the viewfinder on bright days and actually being able to see things in different uh, ratios and data and everything else. There's loads of reasons to do it. And obviously, Sony is a great option to consider with the whole ecosystem. I think, um, Mark, I want to just... I, I told you I, I've got a very small sample size here. I just threw something out on socials a little, about half an hour before we came on saying, I'm going to chat with Sony, any queries from people out there. And I know that my type of uh, followers uh, are going to be probably more in the landscape genre. So the yeah. queries I know that have come up are very much geared towards that. But if, and I understand you may or may not be the person to ask these questions to, and you're part of a much broader company. So all those caveats I'm putting out there, so you don't have to. Um, but there's three kind of major, well, three common things came back from multiple commenters actually. So I'm gonna throw them at you and you can you can bat off accordingly, forward defensive <laughs> or hit, hit them for six, depending on how you feel. So one query was about uh, the possibility of, uh, and, and as I say, some of the cameras you may do may have this functionality and I don't know. So I'm just passing this on, but the possibility for in-camera focus stacking, because I know that is available on certain other brands, but what's the situation with Sony on that? Okay, well, um, currently you, you, we, we have bracketing, but we don't have in-camera focus stacking. And um, unfortunately, I can't tell you whether or not that will be something in the future or, or not. But uh, I think, you know, I feel confident that you know, we do listen to customers. The A1 is a prime example of that, of listening to customers at all levels and and, and changing uh, a lot of technology, adding new things in. So, you know, we've, we've, we've got this, uh, you know, in the camera. If, if we had the opportunity to create our, the, our best, what, you know, what's missing in your camera and could you put it into that camera overnight, then yes, yeah, certainly that would be, a feature but um unfortunately at the moment we don't and the only way you'd be able to do that would be obviously you know taking a number of shots and, and using it uh elsewhere but um you know we'll have to uh watch this space uh for any future announcement but um yeah unfortunately okay. at the moment we don't we don't have it no no that's that's fine i as someone who has a camera that offers that it is an imperfect system anyway and i, I actually end up finding myself practicing <laughs> and doing it the old way but uh, yeah. obviously going forward that might be a nice thing uh multiple exposures has come up in camera multiple exposure options it's quite a niche thing uh but within that niche there's a sort of hardcore of those people who use it and i know that some of the other uh options out there do offer multiple variants of that so is that something that's come up before or again maybe in consideration yeah it is it is you're absolutely right and i think um again it's a, it's the same answer is um you know that there isn't any I think one of the best things you can do, and, and I know that uh, Photospeed have a lot of Sony advocates, uh, mm. you know, people like Terry Donnelly, for example, who's also a, a Sony mm. European image ambassador and a Photospeed ambassador that, you know, have a look at their work, have a look. And I know people like Terry are very approachable as well. So, you know, it might be worth if on social, you can get in contact, you might be following them and so on. So not, not just Terry, but there are others as well. And, and, and you know, follow what they're, they're doing. There's a photographer I've worked with recently, Jack Lodge, who's based down in Dorset, does some incredible mm -hmm. landscape photography and, you know, rattles off techniques that I'm like, wow, how do you do that? So I think the best thing currently is to look at what the um, content creators, there's that word again, are doing and the techniques outside the camera that you may be able to replicate but unfortunately at this stage 
we don't have that feature in the camera. Okay. And listen, I appreciate you taking the corporate bullet on this um, <laughs> because it's not, it's not your decision. But one thing that's that's cropped up again multiple times here, and it's something that's an absolute bug of mine, is to do with aspect ratio. So a lot of the landscape shooters and others actually prefer to work natively in different aspect ratios. So for example, I might be walking around with 5.4 permanently on my mirrorless. And that is because, yes, I know everyone out there is going to scream at me, you can crop after. Of course you can. But I would argue, as a personal opinion, that we should be composing to different aspect ratios at the time. That is the fundamental thing to how we build the image. So what's the Sony, <laughs> so what's the Sony situation on aspect? And, and I'm joking aside, but here, not only Sony, Mark, but I don't physically understand why if they can give us four or five, why there can't be 15 or 20. Because that technology to give us the four or the five has been made, right? So if you can have a square and you can have a 16 by nine, then you should be able to have a five by seven, a four by three, a 16 by seven. It shouldn't make any difference. You're just inputting two different numbers into that setup. So I'm interested in your thoughts on that, maybe more broadly. Okay, well, I, I can say that our cat, cam, re, small, most recent cameras that we released, like the A1, I just double check now to make sure that it, it, it is, does what it says it's, it does, has additional aspect ratio. So yeah, your entry, um, your older models and and more uh, you know releases over the last maybe two three four years will only have pr pretty much three by two four by three uh, or sixteen by nine uh, and with the uh, um, A one I think the A seven S three as well we've now added the box one to one as well but above that no there is no other feature within again I don't know whether or not off what I know, if it's as easy as just being able to do it on a firmware update, I, 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 if it was that easy, maybe we would have done it in the past. But um, again, all I can say is we do listen to customers, we do listen to demand, uh, and I would hope that you know in future releases, whatever they are, then you know we'd be able to you know look at that. But whether or not it happens, it you know I, I have no idea. But no. it's a valid point because uh, you know as a as a you know you want to try and do it in camera it's like crop mode you know the same kind of objections well i don't want to crop in camera i'll do it post well you know you might have that moment where you can literally go from 60 to 28 bang take the shot and you've got it there you've composed it ready if you're going to edit it afterwards then fine but the fact is you don't have to worry about that crop afterwards you've done it but but there isn't a you must do that there isn't a you must not do that so it's down to the individual but i again the the A1 really shows that we've listened to the industry uh, and and we continue to do that. And hopefully um, in the future, we'll, uh, it, these things might happen. So, Thank you, Mark. Yeah, um, I appreciate you you being there to be punched <laughs> up. But I think that's, if nothing else, we're trying to have an open and transparent conversation yeah, about the whole thing. And that's really cool because you can't always get to that stage. I think that question about the firmware cropped up and whether things could maybe retrospectively be put on older camera there's a bit of a feel that maybe sometimes some of that wasn't filtering down through firmware but i mean i, I don't want to get deep yeah. into that but i think fundamentally but, sorry if you want to just pick that up quickly yeah no i was going to say it's it's like we said earlier if we could create that ideal camera now and take everything out and put everything back in what we wanted wow we we, we probably wouldn't be doing this webinar we'd be uh, you know uh, mass producing uh, those type of things the fact is camera technology does evolve and um, you know, there's a lot of resource and development that goes into that, and research, and you know, I think probably for all manufacturers when it comes to that. So, uh, you know, we just you know can't just change overnight. But if you look at cameras like the A9, and in fact, I updated the A1, the A7S3, the ZV1 last night. Did a big firmware update because we've had quite a lot over uh, the last uh, few months, and in particular, um, again. Uh, like the a7s the more specialized cameras are getting more regular firmware updates and i think the a9 uh, a couple of years ago had this list uh, of of firmware updates that um you know enhance the camera so uh, let's hope that something in the future will mm. come yeah and uh i know obviously that we've covered the fact there's a good range of cameras a good range of bodies good range of lenses and I know, having worked with a lot of people using these, that lots of guys raving about the focus quality and the image quality is a, is a big thing. And very serious landscape photographers I know who use uh, the A7Rs for that for that purpose. So I think whatever you're doing, there is a Sony solution, be that body lens and lens and or body lenses, whatever it, the combo might be. So I would definitely encourage you to check them out. I think just as we kind of wrap up here, um, 
and maybe Tim, if you've got any other thoughts, but Mark, I wonder where you guys see the future going. We, we've kind of alluded to it a little bit, but it feels to me like, yes, the mirrorless came in and, and yes, it's a bit lighter, but it, it's maybe that the functionality has ramped up more than the, 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 the smaller. You know, for, at first people thought, oh, great, I'll go smaller. I need to carry less gear up the mountain. But actually now when you look at the lenses and the bodies, and I don't just mean Sony, I mean everything. Yes, they're a bit lighter, but they're not really much lighter when you once you've done the bag out. So what potential proper disruption might be coming down the down the line or 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 you know where might we advance things i think in camera software how we then share the stuff i don't know you know is there anything you've you've seen or heard of or thought of well of course i can't um comment on uh future products because one i i i, I wouldn't be uh, the, the person to speak about that and secondly we we wouldn't disclose anything you know i think the, the answer to your question it, tongue in cheek is technology moves so quickly but by the time we finish this webinar something could have been announced you know it's it's that uh it, it's happening so quickly and um and that's not just from one manufacturer that's from from a lot and i again um when you look at what what's you know look at I'll, I'll use the a1 again because that was a bit of a, a surprise it came out of the blue and you're asking yourself well what what could what could we improve on that we're already you know we've got in our cameras and i think that's you know what could you know the a1's come now with all this new technology in it um you know with you know a stack layer sensor that's improved over uh, the a9 which we thought you know the a9 was the the best you could get in the range so you know i have my own opinions and you know obviously uh i i i won't share them here but um and, and not because i'm you know afraid or anything like that but the fact is that you know <laughs> there's so much you could you could spend another hour two hours on on what what we would like but the fact is i think we're listening to the audience we're listening to the 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 industry uh, where does it go? I don't know. I don't know. It's um, you look at the whole range. There's a huge amount in this range that captures the imagination and may offer you something you don't currently get with your kit, whether it be another brand or an existing Sony camera, because you've had it for a few years now. The fact is, I think looking at those pillars of where everything sits, you know, if you're looking for speed, you go for A9. You're looking for resolution you go for the r you're looking for low light you go for the s you're looking for something that does everything at an affordable price within the camera market you go for the a7 series you were looking for something a bit more stylish a bit more compact and now we've just released three new tri a trio of lenses that are compact full frame lenses uh, you could go for that route and then if you are a professional in the market that you're looking to get something that does everything uh, you know then you've got this a1 so i think Currently, the way that the technology is is you know operating, we have you know an unbelievable range of fast, low light, high resolution cameras that could appeal to everybody. Um, but the technology in the future, I have no idea. Uh, you know, we just like bird IAF. I mean, that's absolutely crazy. The animal <laughs> IAF, eye autofocus, that is, and the human. Uh, eye autofocus that we've got in our cameras is so fast if you haven't tried it and you get a chance to do it have a look at it because it it's 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 just so accurate if we can improve that in the future my goodness that's only a better thing but uh if we do i don't know but um there's not probably much more i could say on that no no that's no. good tim tim any thoughts just before we wrap of, up yeah i think it's part of a, a bigger debate really isn't it not just from sony point of view but from everybody's point of view with stills photography as a genre i suppose is uh, cameras have pretty much got that covered haven't they i suppose from now and it's just little bits like the um the eye focus technology and things like that they're kind of tweaking should we say perhaps but it's if another style is going to come in i suppose because you've got video and stills and if there's going to be something yeah. else another third point to it or something like that that's kind of a mixture or Kind of in between, I think. I, I, I don't know. So it's probably another. It's it's a, it's a talk for another video, perhaps. But it's kind of this. What other, what can be done with photography, it is further. I suppose is what I kind of think. But yeah, yeah. I think I think just finally adding to that, you, Sam said. You know, the we've got really small lightweight lenses, and there are some lenses that have got a lot of glass in. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think the technology at the moment with the capabilities that all manufacturers have, if you want that quality, you want that resolution, you want that speed, then then some 
you know, on a full frame sensor, you know, as you get smaller and smaller. I mean, we just released a 50 mil 1.2 G Master, which has incredible bokeh. You know, the shallow depth of field at the fore and the background is in, it's, it's just probably the best sensor I've ever used in the range, you know. Um, but it's still maintained, you know, we're trying to get it as small as we can, but it physically is impossible, you know, or, or, I don't know, but to, to go even smaller, you know, to cover that sensor. But the fact is a 1.2, it's the first time we've done that in the range. That, that's pretty groundbreaking. Um, and that's only a few weeks old. But I was also going to say is being a consumer electronics company where we can bring in technology from other product categories, I've seen in the last year the um, relationship between Xperia and Alpha is more prominent than ever because we've now got Alpha technology so Sony Alpha camera technology in the Xperia phone range. So, you know, by having, you know, uh, this kind of device now, you can use to stream, you can use as a, as a separate monitor, you can, you can have the cinematic look from the uh, cinema line cameras in your phone. You can, you know, so, so there's this kind of synergy between those two products that if, if you're a, you know, a professional camera user and, and you're looking to buy, you know, or, or you're going to you're going to need something that's compatible in the form of a mobile device, then the fact is you could choose the Xperia range to, to make that handshake. So, like I said earlier, between Alpha cameras and the cinema line, this is almost the same as mm -hmm. the Xperia line with with the Alpha range. And, you know, that can only be a good thing. So maybe there'll be development in that in the future. I don't know. But it seems like in the last year, there's been more focus on that. Um, so, you know, I think that's a, probably a good thing to end on that. You know, t we take it for granted, don't we, where we pick up our phone and something happens, and we take a shot with it. Uh, being pref uh, you know, passionate photographers like we are, we're always saying, yeah, but it's on a phone. But the fact is, you know, you've got all this technology that you can work in harmony. And I've done some testing actually in the last couple of weeks where we've been trying to you know do that and even on the little zv1 camera uh, you can do the same so it's not just you know at the higher end we're developing um and with a firmware update you can now connect your phone your xperia phone uh, there's a couple of models you can do it on with a with a compact camera for like live streaming which now addresses that you know this is the day job isn't it this is the reality yeah. that we're communicating together on our viewers and and uh, you know customers in this form and i think you know if you think about it we're always looking to get the best lighting the best look the sharpest picture um video and picture in sync you know and so on and so on uh, the fact is i think that overlap between computer maybe mobile device camera is something that's you know probably gonna you know well it matters to a lot of people now so maybe that would be something that will change in the future but uh yeah. again mm -hmm. i can only think you know the workflow is important to to maintain so um quite yeah. exciting i think yeah Definitely. absolutely and that ecosystem brings it all together so that's really cool thank you so much mark because i know we've, we've thrown loads of different things at you there but it's really great to just <laughs> get pin you down and talk to you for a bit about the kit um and I, and I would say uh obviously everybody check out the sony gear online they've got a great uk website and through the major uk retailers as well they'll always be able to help you with that transition over to that sony equipment uh but i think that's it for today we really appreciate you guys watching along with this if you've got any comments just pop them in the comments box as usual and uh, the team at photo speed will do our best to pick up on those and and take them forward uh but mark thank you very much for your time pleasure thank you thank you mark. And tim thank you for coming along with us as well today mm -hmm. and uh, like everybody out there keep your eye on the uh, youtube channel every thursday new videos on the photo speed channel and we'll speak to you all again very soon cheerio for now goodbye bye everyone take care be safe